Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. Before I begin my review, I just want to mention this now. Normally when I review an anime movie, I look at both the English dub, or in the case of the first Vampire Hunter D film, English dubs, and the Japanese version because I think it's fair to look at both versions. However, in this case, I could only look at the English dub because it's what my DVD copy from Discotech has, and I could be wrong, but I think that might be the case in the original DVD release of this movie too, which is difficult to find anyways. So there's nothing I could do there. All that said, there is an interesting thing regarding this dub I'll mention when it comes to trivia. Lastly, if you never saw my review of the first Vampire Hunter D movie, the link to it will be in the description. Thank you all for understanding. And with that said, let's talk about the film, shall we? So the plot shows a young woman seemingly being kidnapped by an unseen vampire. After a bunch of texts giving us an idea of the future this movie is set in, we see the titular character, a dumb peel named Dee, played by Andy Philpott, who is called upon by the woman's father and hires him to find his daughter who is named Charlotte and take out the vampire who took her named Meyer Link with a reward of $20 million but it's a race against time as her brother has also hired another group of bounty hunters called the Marcus Brothers, consisting of the leader Borgoff, played by Matt McKenzie, the Blade Master Kyle, played by Alex Fernandez, the Massive Nolt, played by John DiMaggio, the Bedroom Psychic Grove, played by Jack Fletcher, and the lone female member and isn't actually related to them, Layla, played by Pamela Adlon, I hope I pronounced her name correctly, for the very same job. We are now to question will D be able to save Charlotte? And how can D, or even the Marcus Brothers, stop Meyer Link? Or perhaps, is something more going on? That's all the plot I'll mention, so now it's time for me to say what I liked about Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, what I did not like about this movie, some trivia, and my overall opinion. To start off with the positives, it goes without saying, but the animation is significantly better than the first Vampire Hunter D movie, which obviously can be attributed to the advances in technology. One scene I thought was done very well was when the Marcus Brothers meet D for the first time, where after they massacred a bunch of vampires, or as they called them in one thing of dialogue, zombies, seeing what each member with the exception of Grove uses, they hear a horse galloping, and Borgoff fires an arrow where D catches it in midair, all culminating in this fantastic shot. Everything about that scene, ranging from the pacing to the fluidity of the animation, was completely on point. When it comes to the dub, for something that's over 20 years old, for the most part, I think it still holds up rather well. Andy Philpott does a great job in making D more stoic. A good example of this is when he meets Charlotte's father for the first time, when he asks, if she's turned into a vampire, what then? As well as say that $10 million isn't enough payment. The director in the voice makes him sound a bit cold, but considering how much of a loner he is, given that he's a dumb peel, as well as feared and or reviled by most people, it works to this character very well. I really dug John Raffner Lee's portrayal as Meyer Link. One area I thought was well acted is when it's revealed that Charlotte wasn't actually kidnapped, but actually willingly went with Meyer Link out of love, and his performance does show that, like refusing to bite her because he doesn't want her to live the same kind of life that he does. It's just with the way he was directed, their love felt genuine, and made the character an interesting antagonist. The last person I'll bring up is Pamela Adlon as Layla, who really nailed the take-no-nonsense attitude of the character while also making her vulnerable at the same time. One example of the latter is when Carmilla has everyone in a hallucination and Layla was seeing her tragic childhood. While I don't have much to say I can add, the way the scene was directed and acted was solid. There are other people I can mention like Wendy Lee as Charlotte Elborn, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn as the shapeshifter Caroline, Matt McKenzie as Borgoff Marcus, John DiMaggio as a number of characters like Nolt Marcus and John Elborn, and even Mike Bashane as Dee's left hand, but outside of saying the cast more times than not gave good performances, I don't know if I would have much I could say that wouldn't be repetitive. With the music it's kind of funny because when I first heard one of the tracks, 
My first thought was it honestly sounded like something out of The Legend of Zelda in a good way. It's very well done because not only does it give it an adventurous tone on some scenes, but also with how operatic it could be. One track I think does operatic well is the track known as Vampire Missa, I hope I pronounce it correctly, which helps add to the tension when they're in the castle that Carmilla is in and she's about to be revived. It complements the scene very well. The action scenes, for the most part, are shot well. One example is when we see Grove's ability, where after he is given the serum drug thing, that causes his spirit to basically leave his body temporarily and is capable of shooting light beams, but for all intents and purposes, you might as well jokingly call them frickin' laser beams to cause a big ruckus in the territory where the Barbaroi are and annihilate some of the monsters and structures there until D intervenes, and the chasing that ensues where we see what two out of the three main Barbaroi's abilities are. Like with the animation, I felt like the pacing and even tension was quite good. Lastly, the story, while you can make the argument it does have some of the pitfalls of the first Vampire Hunter D movie, I feel is stronger overall. As previously mentioned, despite setting up Meyer Link as the main villain, it's revealed that Charlotte willingly left to be with Meyer Link, and they do a pretty good job in showing that they care for each other. One scene that shows this is when the Marcus brothers trap the carriage by planting explosives around a bridge and they successfully captured Charlotte. And Meyer, despite knowing that vampires can't exist in the sunlight, gets out of the carriage and despite him burning as well as being tortured by Borgoff and Kyle, you can see the look of sadness on Charlotte's face as they're laughing and or mocking him over his suffering and she eventually escapes and embraces Meyer, professing her love and saying she can't go on without him. While the Marcus brothers contemplate on killing them both because they'll get the bounty if she's dead or alive. The way the scene plays out, it's very believable that they care for each other and it makes Meyer Link more sympathetic. So what are some of the things I did not like about this movie? While the dub overall still holds up well, that's not to say there weren't moments where it possibly needed a retake or two and it's difficult to explain why. One scene I can name as an example involved, I guess you could call him the head Barbaroi, where the line delivery felt a bit weird to me. Like I said, it's difficult to explain why I feel this way, and I'll freely admit, like with the other two cons I'll mention shortly, is a huge nitpick because, in this con's case, it didn't take me out of the movie. I can't help but feel like Carmilla was beaten a little too easily in the climax. The build-up was epic, where not only did Borgoff get tricked after seeing a hallucination of his slain brothers and turned into a vampire with Grove sacrificing himself to kill him, but also you have this whole thing where she is being revived from Charlotte's blood after giving her a hallucination of Meyer Link, and the fact that Dee's father originally killed her might make you think it will be personal and that the payoff would be incredible, but not really personally as the way the fight concludes felt a bit rushed overall, and for a character that had the potential to be a legitimate threat, even as an anime-only villain, I feel like they could have done more with this character. I consider this a nitpick because the main focus is centered around chasing after Meyer Link, and to be fair, I consider him to be a much more interesting character than Carmilla. Lastly, there are times where it could get really predictable. One thing I think shows this very well, is when the Marcus brothers see what looked to be Meyer Link's carriage, so they walk up towards it, and when Nolt, Borgoff, and Kyle unload on it, it obviously turns out to not be the carriage at all, but a cloth thing that was made by the shadow manipulator, Bengi. It's predictable in the sense of, it's far too early in the movie, that I know there's simply no way they could have caught up to Meyer Link that quickly. But like with the previous two cons, I will freely admit this is me being extremely nitpicky because moments in a story being predictable is not always a kiss of death as long as it's either engaging or entertaining and this movie no question accomplishes both. Now for some trivia. Normally when it comes to an anime movie the voiceover in Japanese would be done first then the English version. But this wasn't the case as with this movie it was the opposite. The English version was done first and the Japanese version was done later. Something that almost never happens with anime. 
Now, someone can correct me, but I don't think this has really happened for more than a decade after the release of this movie until the release of Space Dandy, which premiered a day before the Japanese version, which led to the birth of simuldubs that you see on places like Crunchyroll today. The follow-up movie began work as early as 1997 after there was fan demand for another movie, something the director was in favor of. The animation was done by Madhouse, which, if I listed everything they made, we'd be here all day. But to list some of their work, you might know them for anime like Death Note, Sunny Boy, and Overlord. The director of this movie is Yoshiaki Kawajiri, I hope I pronounced his name correctly, who directing-wise you might know best as the director of Ninja Scroll, and one of the segments in The Animatrix. Besides that, from what I gathered, he storyboarded popular anime like Jujutsu Kaisen, Demon Slayer, and the second season of Beastars. Some of the other roles the cast were in includes Pamela Adlon, who you might know as the voice of Bobby Hill in King of the Hill, Otto Osworth in Time Squad, and has done additional voices for Bob's Burgers, Wendy Lee, who you might know as Faye Valentine in Cowboy Bebop, Queen Serenity in the Viz Media dub of Sailor Moon, and TK in the first season of Digimon Adventure, also known as Digimon Digital Monsters. The last person I'll bring up is Matt McKenzie, who you might know as Oron in Final Fantasy X and its sequel, Colin Clive in the biopic Gods and Monsters, and was an additional voice in Princess Mononoke. Overall, Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust is better than the first film in almost every way. Plus, unlike most sequels, you don't have to see the first film to be invested in this movie as I feel like it stands on its own well enough. The animation is very well done. The dub, for the most part, still holds up to this day. And while I can see why some people might find it nuts, I personally think it's still entertaining, and what gripes I have are nitpicks that I don't think hurts this movie overall. As far as the recommendation goes, fans of Vampire Hunter D and anime will probably enjoy this movie, and I think it would be a worthy addition to your collection. Currently, you could get it on home video legally from Discotech Media. I give Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust an 8 out of 10, as I feel like the high points of this movie overshadow the nitpicks I have, and like I said, is worth your time if you're an anime fan. This concludes my review of Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. Please get vaccinated if you can, and if you want to see reviews before they are public, then visit my website at michaelshomareviews.com. And if you want to request a review in the future, then feel free to go to my Patreon at patreon.com slash